Welcome at the Kaboom Animation Festival 2021 and our series of talks with uh, filmmakers. And this time uh, we'll have a pleasure to meet the uh, director of a film, Yes People, uh, Gisli Dari Haldorson. And uh, this name already, of course, suggests that uh, this is a person coming from Iceland. And, this, and, and there's something I should add as a curator that it's not so common to, to have a film, animated film from Iceland in our competition. So yeah, I'm super curious uh, uh, what Gisli gonna uh, tell us about the Icelandic animation scene. But first, of course, we have to invite him to the studio. So Gisli, uh, welcome, uh, it's really nice to host you. Uh, thank you for accepting uh, our invitation and thank you for sending your film to our competition. Oh, thank you, thank you for yeah. having me. <laughs> it's yeah, it's really nice to have you here. So maybe let's start with uh, with this uh, Icelandic animation scene. Can you tell us? Because of course uh, I know that there's not too many uh, filmmakers who are doing uh, animated films. There's not not too many animators. Uh, are you in touch in some kind of uh, artistic collaboration with anyone, or do you know many animators on Ice, uh, on Iceland? Yeah, there's a lot of character animators around the world working from Iceland. Um, but the animation scene in Iceland is not really, not really a scene. There's like uh, a life of feast and famine, as they say. There's a, 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 there have been two feature film projects, but there's always uh, a long space between. And um, um, there's a VFX, you know, house here. But culturally, uh, it's not really a big thing. Uh, I know that you already collaborated uh, and you were like working on uh, Coco uh, the Killer Whale, Granny O'Grim's Sleeping Beauty, The Room of the Broom and Plu. So uh, yeah, this is like a project like a, so much different from each other and it was short, it was uh, feature films. So can you tell us a bit uh, what kind of experience did you, uh, did you have on the set of these films and what uh, did you later on bring to your film? Well, Coco was my, f my kind of first real big success in Iceland. It won the audience award in the local festival and it kind of gave me a job in animation in Iceland, you know, for doing advertising and internet banners and stuff like that. Not very exciting work, but well, sometimes. But, um, and then the other films, I was primarily a character animator. And uh, yeah, it just, I kind, I kind of went, uh, I'm kind of a late bloomer because I, I did business school I I, um, I I was always kind of a little bit older than everybody else in the studios and, you know, gaining the same knowledge. I, I really always have had a lot of stories and ideas in me, but always been uh, hesitant in executing them because I was so limited. Like Coco, if you see it now, it's, uh, it's uh, a very poor sort of execution, but... Uh, it was a fun idea, but you know, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I feel like the last, this the decade of those films that you were mentioning was just schooling myself further in storytelling and animation, and uh, it was also great fun. And um, and I have to say, this film, yes, people, it, it was an effort to uh, go to the next floor or you know to take a different path in my career and start telling these stories that I really want to tell. And uh, Yes People was uh, a perfect fit to get a grant in the Icelandic Film Fund mm -hmm. because they, they require you to have something related to Icelandic culture. And this idea of Yes, it's um, our neighbors in the Faroe Islands, they affectionately call us the Yes People because they've noticed how many times we use Yes in a sentence. Mm. And, uh, you know, when I was thinking about the film, I just thought, you know, um, is this why we are so musically inclined? Is this why music is so big in Iceland? You know, our vocabulary is quite small, but then we rely a lot of this intonation stuff, but. Huh. <laughs> Yeah. 
有，有有有有有有，有。<laughs> of course, in the end, I, th I thought, like, why? I don't know, there's a lot of countries that are equally as musical as <laughs> Iceland. I think I just got... Mm, I uh, don't know. Maybe uh, when I'm thinking about Bristol, that this is like a city with uh, the biggest uh, number of musicians per square meter. But with Iceland, uh, when you com compare the number of uh, citizens and the, the number of uh, talented musicians, then, yeah, it's, it is pretty surprising, yeah. Um, yeah, it is surprising. It could also play a factor that we have such darkness in winter and uh, people just need some something to get their heart beating. I was thinking about this darkness and about these like, distances between people in uh, on Iceland. Uh, uh, when I was thinking, if you didn't uh, think uh, at your film that your character can interact a bit more. Because there's several right, parallel that... stories uh, in your movie, but yeah. the characters actually don't interact too much. So. Do you think it's an Icelandic yeah, this thing? This is very, yes, it's a very Nordic thing as well. Uh, it's 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 very uh, yeah because I've lived in Ireland and England and it's refreshingly different. Mm -hmm. You know the just walking in the streets and having a just people come up and say hello and it's very different. We're quite um, reserved and we have a few words and so like in general. I'd say, and that is very typical of neighbors who live in the same block. They would be kind of, you know, just giving them a, a very, very minimal nod or a, or a like a <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like a sound effect. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. it is funny. Like when I came back from Ireland, and maybe this has had an influence. I, I find the film plays really well in the Nordic countries. They know Icelanders a bit better, maybe. <laughs> Your film is almost like a silent film. There's only a couple of sounds, which makes this film really yeah. uh, understandable, uh, like wherever you're gonna send it. So, it, it of course, uh, maybe some uh, people from the north will recognize some culture patterns, but uh, uh, but the film itself will be understandable, like everywhere, because of the of the communication style which you choose. When I was thinking about the way we talk with the tones, is I, I got kind of excited about making like a like a humble upgrade to the silent film. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, just just sounds or one word, just see, and uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, animation is so detail oriented, so you can get a lot of the out of the performance. And so, I, in fact, the film is quite uh, has a lot of kind of silent film motifs, like the camera doesn't pan. We, I try to resist cutting at all cost, cutting the, and, and very long takes. And um, yeah, and I just brought a little bit of coloring to it just to, uh, uh, among other things, to suggest the upgrade to the silent film because it's usually black and white. <laughs> Okay, so so there, there was a version or like a, the the moment when you consider to make a black and white film. Yeah, there was a version, and then I, I had too many reasons to make it color. The other one was I wanted to make the film about people, and I in the ref, in the local there's it's yes people and it's sort of three lights combined to make one white light, and I thought it was nice because. All the apartments have this primary light color overall. Uh, one is green, one is red, and one is blue. And they kind of they kind of hint at a broad group of you know types of relationships and people. So it's very broad, but I that was the idea to try to get a broad scope of people, and then and then the 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 primary lights kind of uh, all those colors they are s sort of signifying this is one of the color of of the white light that we are all that we all inhabit i don't know if this makes sense to you yeah d definitely yes absolutely i was i was wondering uh, about the usage of colors in your film so you answer my question that's great and uh, about yeah. actually this uh, parallel stories which you uh, constructed. So uh, was it like uh, easy for you to decide uh, 
uh, when the scene, like uh, about the uh, during the editing process, which scenes gonna stay, which will be? Did you, for example, cut out any scene, uh, or you were planning everything from the scratch and you took it all? I had a lot of scenes that I cut in the storyboard phase. Yes, I tried to maintain within the block as much as I could, um, just to get that feeling of being uh, stuck or I don't know. I was always chasing that a bit because all the, it's kind of about being, well, to be honest, I was, um, when I was making the film, I was thinking about the, this primal language thing, mm -hmm. universal thing. And on the other hand, I had, uh, I was terrified of running in circles in my life and just, you know, every day being the same. And so that, that was my thinking when I was making it. So I was, my interest was uh, depicting people who are, are all in one or another way stuck in a loop. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a bad, it can be a sort of growing loop where you spiral outwards. But some people are, yeah, either imploding and so, uh, or just running in circles forever. So the, the film should, uh, like there's no change happening in the end. It could be played again, it could be the same A. And so, yeah, sorry to answer your question. Uh, a lot of the decisions, where to, I try to implement those things where they're, you know, the block is kind of boring and boxy and, uh, and st stuck in these spaces. And, and even the silent film format kind of invites that with no cutting for relief and um, uh, camera not panning or rotating or, uh, and they, they all say the same word and they all, they can only play the same song and that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm super curious because when you talk about this, like uh, uh, going in circles, uh, like uh, I can imagine that during uh, the artistic project, you could also sometimes feel that you are still stuck in the circle. Did you try also by the cre creation, the story also create some kind of a more serpentine type of a narration for yourself and, and, and your life and give yourself a hope that it doesn't have to be a circle. It can be something which uh, uh, that you can actually upgrade or like uh, some kind of open the circle. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, 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 there was something happened in the writing process. It's quite personal, but my grandparents who have been major supporters of my, of me doing animation, uh, which is kind of amazing for Iceland because old people in Iceland are quite conservative and, you know, they just want you to be a lawyer or a teacher. But they, they both died during the writing process. And so it definitely influenced my thinking. They had such a beautiful relationship. You know, they had, um, you know, of course, after 65 years of marriage, you get on each other's nerves. Mm -hmm. But they just had this beautiful way of using humor to cope and I just really um, needed to put that in and that that was maybe also what I wanted to that, that is what I took with me to try and um, yeah you use that because yeah kind of accept where you are and just uh, yeah it's uh, all about the attitude as well and um, yeah yeah, you know, it's like a, yeah, I'm, I'm really sad, I'm really sorry to hear about your parents, but also uh, your grandparents, but also like, um, uh, I'm thinking like in this movie, you created this like a little, um, uh, like a gorgeous uh, and also very optimistic, uh, like a block of flats when the rituals will be repeated over and over and they're gonna actually stay alive there like forever. But for you making this film also like open the door to actually just go further. So yeah, I think it's a uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, okay, it's very up uplifting story for I think all of us that you can go through such a, a difficult experience like and and then just actually uh, end up in a better place. Mm, yeah, it's hard to continue this conversation after uh, after this uh, statement I have to say because it is uh, yeah. uh, it is like a actually yeah, it is an ending conversation story because uh, this is, you know, I, I can imagine as all the artistic pro projects should uh, end up that you somehow like, um, um, 
finalize certain things from your past, but also like uh, open some doors for the future. This is like a great, uh, great thing. So uh, yeah, so I'll just not ask you any more questions if you if you allowed me and. Uh, I would just sure. say that uh, now I also understand, uh, I think, much more uh, one, one of my favorite pieces of art made by Yoko Ono. I don't know, maybe you know this mm -hmm. one, uh, when people are going on the ladder uh, and uh, there's a small Apple. glass and they, they put it on the paper which is on the ceiling and they read what is written there and actually it just says yes. So, yeah, right. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I always love that Wasn't work. Is that the one that John Lennon saw? Yes, uh, he, yes. John Lennon. yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think after, uh, like with this work and with your film, I think I understand more why it's better to sometimes choose uh, yes people than the no people. So, yeah, thank you for mm -hmm. your film and thank you for this conversation. It was really nice. No worries, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you very much. Yeah, so I'll just nice. have to invite now uh, everybody who just watched this conversation to watch uh, fantastic film, Yes People. Uh, I, of course, have to thank you for your conversation. And I have to add that because that's amazing that we all going to keep our fingers crossed uh, in upcoming days for your Oscar nomination. And uh, thank you. Yeah, and uh, good luck and uh, have a fantastic rest of the day and hope to see you again in person somewhere on the animation or live route. Oh. oh yeah, I'd love to come to Kapum one day. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for this conversation. Yeah.